Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to the vlog. I'm Valerie. If you're new here, my name is Valerie. And we're about to do a recap of Ghost Book 2, um, Episode 9. Uh, also, if you're new here, I do show recaps on shows that I find interest in. But normally I do vlogs. So I normally do vlogs, but if I find a show that I'm interested in, we do a little show recap, little girl talk, catch up, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you're not new here, I know I didn't recap episodes 6, 7, and 8. But the only reason why I didn't is because everything that happened in episodes 6, 7, and 8, I predicted in episodes 1 through 5. So there was no need for me to do a recap. But let's go ahead and get into um, episode 9, y'all. I'm actually, I already watched it, but I'm getting ready to link up with a friend and I'm about to watch it like I ain't never watched it before. <laughs> it's about to be all new, but I'm about to do a recap because this episode deserves a recap. This was by far the best episode. Thumbs up if you think that this was the um, best episode thus far of Power because um of the season and i'm so upset that the next episode is the season finale but hey it is what it is i believe that i've seen if i'm not mistaken i've seen somewhere on the internet that power book 3 is coming out in summer of 2021 so we don't have long y'all know i'm about to get my little drink on before i get over to where i'm going um but yeah i'm about to get ready y'all oh drop my lashes so it's basically about to be a get ready with me or whatever we're about to do a recap let's get into it and so episode nine begins with kane cutting up the body of the gtg gang members that he killed in front of little guap <laughs> so he's getting rid of these bodies that um he killed and he's like happy to do it y'all like did y'all see his face he was so excited about cutting off the body parts and put them in those barrels and Lil Guap was like did y'all see Lil Guap face he was like legit scared now Lil Guap think he a little he a thug but he is getting to see Kane up close and see how dangerous Kane is and he is legit scared like Lil Guap is like oh my god like Kane is crazy this nigga is crazy and Kane really is crazy like we really that so the the name of this episode is monster and we really got to see the monster in Kane and we got to see the monster in come out in um a few other characters but we'll get there so yeah um we got to see a lot of if if, if you weren't clear on everybody's true colors and everybody's role in this season, this episode should have solidified <laughs> any doubts or any confusion that you had regarding anyone's role in this uh, season, all right? So after um, that, the next scene um, is Tyreek gets that text from Tubit, and Tubit is like, where's my money? And I'm just, what do y'all think? Okay, so what are we about to do about Tubit? Because Tariq don't got time for that. He's trying to get his mom out of jail. He's trying to, I guess, avoid him going to jail himself. He's already working with the Tejadas, which is hot. He's on campus selling drugs. Him being involved with the Tejadas is causing a little bit of confusion. I know it's remedying some of, remedying some of his problems, but it is also bringing problems, which of course it would, you know, he's in that world selling drugs and things like that. It, it comes with the price. It comes with the, it, that is a part of the lifestyle. And then two bit is out. Uh, I cannot remember. Somebody can remind me in the comments why two bit feels that ghost owes him or is two bit not telling the truth or is two bit just trying to get some money. Cause I cannot remember why, um, ghost owes two bit, but you know, he says that, um, Ghost said that he would take care of him before he died, and now it's on Tariq. And I'm just like, I cannot remember, and I'm not about to go back and watch all them seasons and try to figure out what it was. So somebody enlighten me, because I, I cannot remember. But what are what are we gonna do? Because Tariq took um Tariq was about to take that money that he owed the Tajadas 
and pay too big, but then he turned around and gave that money to Epiphany, but we'll get there. But if he had given that money to um, too big, then would it then become a problem for the, t you know, the t the Tejadas? <laughs> because Tariq is now having to like pay too big and he's using their money to do it. I don't know. But I feel like in the next, in the next scene, um, we're going to talk about Zeke and Carrie. So I feel like the dynamic of Zeke and Carrie's relationship was born out of Zeke's, um, relationship with his own mother if y'all remember he said he didn't really have his dad was never there and he didn't really say anything about his mom so i'm assuming that he doesn't have a relationship with his mom especially with the role that monet plays and zeke's life run um, monet basically takes care of zeke so i'm figuring like zeke's mom is like absent She's probably like on drugs or something. I don't know. That's like the vibe that I'm getting. I can't. Write, I can't quite remember. I want to say that when um, Carrie asked Zeke about his mom, he he didn't give an answer when they were in that restaurant that one day. I don't think that Zeke had get, gave her an answer about that. So um, that's why I feel like Zeke's relationship with um, his mom is what is making him drawing him to Carrie and that Carrie knows that and that's how Carrie ended up um getting Zeke to let his guard down and having him tell her remember she was pressuring him like you got to tell me what happened you got to tell me what happened at uh in order to get all these bruises on you y'all yeah, probably should have did these brows first before I I'm really like on my second glass of wine I'm I'm I should have did my brows first but anyway, um, yeah. So Carrie gets him the Zeke to let his guard down. And since a lot of the characters are like in this episode, a lot of the characters are choosing sides. Who do y'all think whose side do you think Zeke is gonna choose when it all boils down? Because you know, Monet already told him. Monet already know knew something was up when she met up. At the last episode when she was at the game and she seen Zeke with um Carrie. But yeah, Zeke then went and ran his mouth. He know he wasn't supposed to say anything. But I'm trying to see. I wonder where his alliances are going to be because Kane already going against the he going against the grain. So he basically been exiled. But in the next scene, um, and so, yeah, in the next scene, the detective. How do y'all feel about the detective racially profiling the students when looking for the um, parties involved in that um, gang member, that GCG gang member being found on campus? I feel like... <laughs> I did feel a way at first like how you just gonna assume it's some black person and then the crazy part is is like I feel that way but then again it is some black gangbanger drug dealer that is the cause of this um <laughs> the cause of that um GCG gang member boo or whatever his name was was his name boo is the cause of boo being found dead on campus it's the it's the result of all black gang members too big, Tariq, um, Lil Guap, and what's his name? Kane. So it's their fault. It's black gang members' fault that um, somebody has been found dead at Stansfield that wasn't a student. <laughs> yes, y'all. It's really, I was like, damn. When they was like, yeah, um, but when they when they was doing the, when the black cop was racially profiling, I was like, dang, it really is a black person. But how do y'all feel? I feel like the uh, professors. It was reassuring that all of the staff, the staff at Stansfield, was taken up for the students. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh yeah, this was what's up. Like. And then I kind of felt like, dang, that's like when your parents had your back and turns out you were the one that did it the whole time. 
<laughs> oh my god i was like dang but then it, in the same token it is comforting that even jabari's lame ass had everybody's back i was like mm-hmm Oh, that's right so yeah girl seeing that part was just like well, you know it was reassuring it was comforting and all but if the truth ever comes to the light of day it's gonna be like dang uh, why did it have to be the black gang banger you know what I'm saying So anyway, Monet is like so mad at Kane, y'all. Like she is so mad at Kane. And I'm wondering if that relationship can ever be repaired because it seems like right now it's beyond repair, especially after Kane didn't kill Monet's little boyfriend. Isn't that her, that cop? That's her boyfriend, ain't it? I forgot his name. Well, you know, the, the one she gets her inside, I can't remember his name, the detective um, that uh, Monet was sleeping with. Yeah, Kanan went ahead and killed her. And yo, like, on that part, I was like, oh, shit. You would have thought I was in here watching football the way I was in here watching. I would, <laughs> that was one part where I was like, oh, shit. And then it was another part. What was that? Oh, that part when Drew got shot. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Those two parts, y'all. So, yeah, um, Monet, I was, like, a little bit taken back, even when Monet... Speaking of Monet and Kane's relationship being beyond repair, I was like a little drawn back because Monet told Drew like when Drew had was coming back to tell the story of how he went to meet with Kane and Kane was like, whose side are you on? Kane basically gave him an ultimatum and she, Monet was like, you should have killed Kane. I was like, dang, she was like, you should have killed all them niggas. I was like, oh my goodness, like Kane too? She don't even want to hear Kane's name. She's so disgusted. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, she is so upset. Y'all, I'm not putting on no foundation. But this ain't no. I'm Y'all just getting ready with me. This ain't that. This ain't that. I ain't about to tell y'all what I'm doing. We just talking. But, um, yeah, I was like, oh, man. Like, Monet is, like, done with Kane. She didn't tell. This is the second person she didn't tell that um, they should have just killed. She told Tariq, like, if he come after you. And you have to ha handle it, handle it. And then she didn't tell Drew he should have killed Kane. So I feel like I ain't wearing my eyeliner in here. I'm gonna put on some eyeliner. Yeah, I need some eyeliner. I feel like their relationship is beyond repair. And um, I don't know. But I want to say their relationship is beyond repair. But Courtney Kemp, at the end of the episode, when Courtney Kemp gives her recap, she asked us, uh, well, she mentioned that it's going to be interesting to see how Monet and Kane are going to fix the relationship. And then when you watch the preview for the next episode, it looks like Kane has to show up for his family. So uh, I'm interested to see because I'm not sure how he can... Um, repair the relationship although i think that monet wants him to repair because when drew got shot monet was like why weren't you here and i'm just like did you want him to be here or do you not want him to be here now which one is it like you got to pick and choose you got to make a choice like you confusing this boy he he already off his rocker like which one is it you know that's her son at the end of the day like you know she love her baby but um y'all speaking of somebody being somebody's son um tasha might need to just stay in jail because she is so manic like every time we see her seen she is so like anxious like she needs to go see the therapist in there and get some medicine for her anxiety because she always like calling Tariq panicking she always is something going on she don't even really know what's really going on because she behind bars but she probably needed to just stay her ass in jail because she was taking forever to give up that burner phone when they came to search her cell. Um, quick second, y'all. <laughs> I know this ain't that, but we we're gonna mention Sittenberg. Can y'all see it? Anyway, Sittenberg sent me some perfume, and it's basically like a monthly subscription of perfumes that you can get. 
um, for like $14.99 a month. It's a 30-day supply of high-end perfumes because you know perfumes can be expensive. I'm pretty sure y'all know all about it. Um, I'm just going to mention it here. You can get a free um, perfume or cologne. If it's some guys watching, you get a free cologne by clicking using the link in my description box. This right here is Dolce & Gabbana The One. This is so, this smells so good. Ladies, this is the one. This is the grown and sexy right here. If you want to smell grown, sexy, sophisticated, Dolce & Gabbana The One, that's it. And it's a good winter scent. Um, it's warm, it's inviting. It's just real sexy, like, it, it really is. Um, but sure, y'all, let's get back to the recap. So, <clears throat> when she was taking forever, when Tasha was taking forever to give that burner phone, I was pissed. Like, girl, if you don't give up that daggone phone. But yeah, she gave it, like she had an option or something. Like, who are you asking all these questions that she just needs to just stop it. But after she gave up the phone, I was like, dang, this girl just, she... <laughs> This is why Ghost was in charge because Tasha is just, she, uh uh. This is why she, that's why Ghost gave her the role of being the accountant because she needs to play her role because she is not the one. And then she sent Tariq to kill uh, Epiphany. I was like, this is this is the second time. Is this not the third? Maybe the third time that Tasha has sent Tariq to go kill somebody. Like she knows her son, she knows that is her son is her is is he she know that's ghost son okay because he's a killer just like his daddy like that is and she a killer too but y'all i was like did she just tell her and then she had <laughs> davis's girlfriend go tell uh i was like girl you're just getting everybody all messy you didn't tell davis's uh assistant to go tell Tariq to kill epiphany y'all all in trouble but yeah y'all and i almost felt um i almost felt a way about epiphany like i kind of felt bad that she was going to be um killed but then again I didn't like I was kind of like on Tariq's and the St. Patrick's side because when um Epiphany kind of was like yeah tell me what y'all need me to say I was like what well, that you first she was like oh y'all want me to be a snitch well tell me what y'all need me to say that scene happened so quick like it went from I ain't saying nothing I don't help cops I don't really want to help y'all to tell me what you want me to say like like that it was just that fast and I was like dang but um the next scene you see like jabari y'all that scene where jabari had busted up into carrie's office i was like now i know your picture told that like hold on now you getting a little too comfortable like he came in it was late he did not knock he's been overstepping his boundaries since he came by unannounced with that takeout food talking about some he thought it would be a nice gesture oh and when he, like he really overstepped his boundaries when he gave Carrie what Carrie found out about that note that said a professor at Stansfield is sleeping with a student I was like this man don't have no coof because he really just busted up in her office even after she threatened him busted up in her office unannounced then knock on the door and then took something off her desk I was like now hold on hold on a minute I was watching I was appalled I was like what I know you fucking lying but um when he took that off of Carrie's desk, I was just like, uh. and then when he volunteered himself to like help Carrie interview the students, I was like, this is just too much. This is too much. What do y'all feel like um, Jabari and um, Carrie, their relationships with, um, well, Carrie and Zeke and then Jabari and Tariq, like they're not going to turn those two in because one carrie can't turn them in zeke in because she's have she's sleeping with them and then monet's already threatened her and jabari really can't turn in tariq because he's basically using tariq to help save his own career outside of stansfield his his writing career 
So he needs Tariq that, you know, like when he was trying to tell Carrie, like, be careful because Tariq's selling drugs when he was about to text her. He stopped himself because he knew like, oh, I need, he's using Tariq for his intellectual um, intelligence, I guess. I don't know what intellectual property. I guess that would be called intellectual property. He's basically still in Tariq's thoughts and his intellect and using it to in his life and using it to write a book so yeah and and he cannot um turn Tariq in because of his own because of they the both of them can't turn in um the two students that they're involved with because of their own uh entanglements with them these students <laughs> So how long do y'all think um, Brayden and Tariq's friendship? Brayden and Tariq's friendship is kind of on the rocks. I kind of wanted to relate Brayden and, um, y'all this light is in my face. I kind of wanted to relate Brayden and Tariq's relationship um, to Ghost and Tommy's relationship. And I don't, I'm not sure if it's because Tariq is black and Tommy's Caucasian or if it's because the actual roles that they're playing um I I wouldn't say that and when I say I want to relate is like Brayden is his right hand man not like Brayden is some <laughs> because you know Kane's personality is more closer to um um I didn't forget his name y'all I've been drinking um oh my god Kane's um, personality is more related, more relatable to Tommy than um, Brayden's is. But Brayden is becoming Tariq's like right hand man. Like Brayden can be trusted. Um, Brayden didn't. Brayden didn't give any information to that girl. I didn't forget her name. He didn't. Uh, uh, Sax's niece, whatever her name is. He didn't give any information to Sax's niece. So he can be trusted and he's down he's down he's in he's in this he he's down with the selling drugs for whatever reason that he's down in it he wants to get his own money outside of his parents he is with it so Brayden can be trusted and i wonder if Tariq is going to involve him more or is he going to keep him at bay because keeping him at bay is causing a rift in their relationship and i feel like Brayden is somebody that is um that will be beneficial to have around for Tariq in the long run so um in the next scene when uh Monet Monet y'all <laughs> that scene where Monet had came and was in Carrie's office and then Carrie came in like first of all she's in Carrie's office in Carrie's chair and when Carrie came in she did not give the right response she should have been like what are you doing Carrie gave herself away right then and there Right then and there, you knew that she was sleeping with Zeke just by her whole reaction. I was like, man, Carrie is just, Ugh. I was like, you know what? In that moment, I said Carrie and Jabari are perfect for each other. They just need to get back with each other and just call it a day because they both stupid. They're both aggravating. <laughs> both of their characters are just like, I'm not, I'm not feeling their characters. I, I really, I'm really not, but it is what it is. Um... But she definitely gave herself away. And then in the next scene where, um, speaking of <laughs> relationships or what have you, um, and Tariq, how do y'all feel about Effie? Effie blatantly just told Tariq that she is a monster. She told Tariq that she is a monster and that he is a monster and that she knows that she's a monster and she has accepted this about herself. And that Tariq needs to accept that about himself. And I want to say that Effie will be the perfect, will be the perfect woman for Tariq, but she's too dangerous. And Tariq, he cannot trust her. Especially as she just told him to his face that she with the shits. He cannot trust her, y'all. How do y'all feel about y'all think that he uh should date um what's her name? Lauren? I don't like Lauren for him either. And I don't like Diana for him either. Diana's so emotional. I don't like any of the them women for her. But y'all, I'm so glad that um, 
uh, Tariq didn't have any sex scenes. Every time he went to kiss uh, Effie, I almost threw up in my mouth. Like, boy, boy, <laughs> if you don't get your... <laughs> Yeah, y'all, I was like, ugh, get out of here. Especially when he took his shirt off. I was like, put your shirt back on, ugh. Looking like a 15 year old. But, um, <laughs> y'all, this lighting got me looking so greasy. My whole face look greasy. But it's dark outside and whatever that light over there oh that's horrible yeah it's dark outside and this is just gonna have to do because yeah um how long do y'all think little little guap is gonna let kane keep on putting guns to his face and threatening to kill him and putting knives to his throat and stuff like that before little guap be like enough is enough because, first of all, Kane's talking about Lil Guap is loyal. No, he is not. He already tried. Y'all already had to check Lil Guap when he came after Monet that one time. Lil Guap don't got no loyalty but to himself. And Kane is retarded if he don't see that. He gonna have to kill Lil Guap. My God, I sound like one of them. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah. Um, what do you think Tariq's redemption is going to be for killing his father? Tariq obviously feels um, guilty for killing his father, okay? Almost every other episode, he wants to go ahead and take the blame for killing his father because he know he did it. When he was drunk, you know, they say a... a um, a drunk man speaks a sober, a drunk mouth speaks a sober mind or whatever. So when he was at his uh, sister's grave site and he was talking and he confessed that he killed his father. Um, you know, he wanted this, he told on himself then. He keeps, he keeps admitting that he killed his father and it's, it's definitely weighing on him. And I wonder what is going to be his um, redemption for all his past transgressions. Because even in this episode, um, he kind of thought about all the people that he let down. You know, Lala or Keisha, his sister, his mom, Tommy, his dad. He, like He's let down almost everybody that gets near him, like he said. And I'm just wondering, like, he started to feel this is weighing on his conscience. So, and I feel like his only escape is going to ha is going to be him admitting that, yes, I am a monster. Yes, I am my dad. That is going to be his only escape and him just coming into that and owning that and going full throttle with what it is that he's doing because he's almost there. I mean, now he's selling coke. He He's there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's, you know, him coming into himself, him coming in. In, almost like into manhood like he's coming into the game he has come into the game he's becoming you know and i think once he becomes or once he gets there that is when he his character gets there that's when his character is going to um feel some type of redemption for what he did to his dad even canaan he, he even lied and got canaan caught up so he he's betrayed almost everybody and he's gonna He's not going to um, find any redemption, in my opinion, until he owns up to who he is, just like Effie said that he needs to do. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't think that he's going to go to jail. Um, based off the la the preview um, of the season finale, I don't believe Tariq is going to end up going to jail. I, I don't think so. I think his mom probably is going to be out. Um, she's gonna probably end up being out of jail and I because at this point Sax has too many people against him he has whoever that attorney is that's working with him he's again he has something against Sax Davis and his assistant has something against Sax I mean yeah Tasha has something against Sax Tariq has something against Sax Tariq has hired 
Tamika, y'all, when I seen Tamika walking, I was so mad. Like, why she always got to be walking like this, y'all? Please, get this lady some kitten heels and, and just slow her down. Just slow it down, baby. You ain't, it, it ain't even that deep. And then she took a dollar just to, <laughs> she want to get sacked so fast. She was like, give me a dollar. Y'all. So, Sax is going down. He has way too many people against him. You know, Tamika's against him. If they call um, Blanco Rodriguez, if they call her back up, she's against Sax. Sax, has, Sax is going down, period. Sax is going down. Um, and that's just that on that. Uh, I think that's it, y'all. Because I, I briefly, I kind of watched it and I was like, I don't want to watch... I don't want to watch too much, but it was so good, y'all. Like, I'm I'm really excited for next week's episode. Anyway, y'all, I got to go. I got somewhere to be. I got to throw on this little dress, some shoes. I'm about to finish drinking that. If y'all watched all the way to the end, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's been real. Thanks for kicking it with me. Y'all be easy. Peace.